And three, two, and one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 64. 64, for sure. 64. Episode number 64 of the King's Speech Podcast with Trevor and Josh. The podcast you can relate to, laugh at, learn from, from two guys who realize the streets and the club only look fun on television and maybe Instagram now, depending on who you're following. What's good? You got to purge out your followers. That's what you got to do. Uh, no, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. How's your weekend? I'm good. Weekend was good. Uh, got a gender reveal in. It's okay. a boy. Um, is that why you're wearing blue today? No, this is what I've been wearing all day. So, oh, you know. I, I thought maybe you yeah. were just like, oh my God, it was a boy. I'm going to wear blue until the baby's born. I yeah, I'm just so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed that it's so happy every for day, you. every single day. I am genuinely, genuinely happy for Was it a Dominican and, and um, lady. gender reveal? Um, no. Well, he's Guyanese. His girl is, I think, has Dominican like roots. Um, but it was very. Tra- I mean, I don't know what a traditional gender reveal is because gender reveals are so new. And pinata, I'm never, ever the, the gonna pinata. Do one. What was the uh, what was the instrument to reveal the color? Uh, it was uh, those like things, those like poppers where you pop out like the blue yes. powder. Yes, yes. So it was that, and then some blue balloons okay. that they let go over uh, like a pier, a dock in Long Island City. Really great aesthetics. Cold. It was really dope. It wasn't that cold. It was windy. It got windy after a while, but it could have been colder. And it was sunny. So it was good. Nice. Good day for it. Good day for it, indeed. How was your weekend? Weekend was good. Um, I have all the respect for LeBron James right now because he's 36 years old Mm -hmm. and he plays basketball every night. I'm 30 years old. And I went out three nights this weekend following curfew and guidelines and such. And I am exhausted. (laughs) Okay. I'm okay. exhausted. And I didn't even do anything. I was like more so just kind of standing there. Okay. So like I just have a, a big time respect for those who are over the age of 30 doing great things right now because I cannot do great things. I want to go to bed right now, actually. I mean, does that say more about LeBron or more about you? Ah. I want you to go out for three days straight and then you let me know how you feel. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound fun at all. It's not fun, man. That doesn't sound like I'd have a good time at all. <sighs> No, thank you. You got I'm, that one. I'm the old cranky man in the spot now. Oh, welcome. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Old cranky welcome. man. We have, I have a seat right next to you, right here. Yo. <laughs> right here for you. <laughs> bro, you got to see how I give it up now. And especially if like Kim's not with me, I'm just uh-huh. like, bro, all day, scowl face. I mean, until, I, until like I hear like a song I like, then I get hype, and then I'm back to the scowl. You ever you ever be in the club and look at other people and wonder, yo, why are they having so much fun? <laughs> no, you're an evil this person. song isn't even that good. No, see, that's you. That These is you. These drinks are watered down. She ain't even that cute. Why he only <laughs> born her like that? I have those thoughts all the time when I'm in yo, clubs or bars or anything like that. I know, I know all the guys in the spot that look that are doing the same thing you're doing. Yeah, and I'm like, look at you, hating on a good time. <laughs> but that's you now, though. No, no, no. I don't be, I let people have their fun. I, I just be looking at people like, whatever, cook. But you I look at them like, yo. Hate, though. No, you're like, yeah, yeah, that was hate. That was just hate. You're like, yo, <laughs> look at him having fun with that semi decent looking chick over look there. At him, look at him having fun with that six. <laughs> <laughs> having a blast. Having a blast. <laughs> Crazy with that what six. alcohol does. <laughs> <laughs> After those Actually, Henny shots, she's a 7.5. Yo, speaking oh, of which, I actually have a quick funny story. So one of my buddies, he just moved to um down here to the Fort Lauderdale area. Mm-hmm. So yesterday we were at the spot, and it was a it was a couple of different friends, but there was like these two girls, and he was like, nah, not for him. So I was like, <laughs> all right, cool, like whatever. Couple Casamigos in later on. <laughs> He was chatting him up oh, all crazy. <laughs> let's get busy after the Casamigos gets uh, gets in the system. He was straight to it after the Casamigos. And the thing was, they were ne- like his. Like the thing is, like he's one of the friends. His standards are actually it's Christian. He listens all the time. His uh-huh. standards are super super high. That's so, good. Like, which is great. King, Amazing. Don't sacrifice your standards. No, nah, don't settle. But like they weren't like the worst of the group. But his because his standards were so high, he was like, never. I'm good. And so then later was- on, chatting uh-huh. him up. Chat them, chat them. Because now, now I want to know exactly what they look like. <laughs> um, 
Sixes and sevens, sevens, yeah, sixes and sevens. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to get your man. Is your man single or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I don't want to get him in trouble. All right. No. So, I mean, if you does he live down there or he came under the just the move, just out? move, just oh, move. just you can get your shit off, King. Get you your start six. somewhere. You can start. You start at a six and you build your way up. Okay, you build your way up. Like get that you. six is gonna go tell a few eights and nines about their experience yeah. meeting you. He's you new do in a town. great job. Yeah. Look, listen, like the chicks are gonna love a nigga that's new in town. That means he doesn't have any kids or any drama. <laughs> well, he might have kids. <laughs> in this day and age. Yeah, I mean, you never know, but the kids aren't there. So they know that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they know fact. that. So yeah, I mean, you gotta start somewhere, man. You know, you yeah. work your way up the ladder. That's what I'm trying. Like, as a see, I'm I am now like Chris Paul, um, Udonis Haslam. James Posey, Paul Millsap, you get who I am? I'm a vet, okay? Give me the vet minimum. And I'm just there facilitating. I'll swing the you ball. You pick some you. wild vets. <laughs> <laughs> you did? You did that in Miami? <laughs> you know what? That's I'm not you UD. Are? I'm not okay. UD. I'm Chris right. Ball. I'm Chris Ball in the Respect. Phoenix Suns right now. Respect. Really and truly. Um, just coaching up you, Devin Bookers. Coaching up my Devin Book, Get leading into the Aitens. promised land. And I'm just sitting there. I don't have to score okay. 20. No, you don't. You don't. Never. You just got to facilitate. Facilitate, control the pace of the game. Control I'm the pace really of the game. good. At and play really good defense. Ah. Got to play really good defense. I play good, good D. Defense. Where you from? Oh, my God. My fiance is from Colombia. Like <laughs> That's the defensive oh, move right my, there. Yo, my defensive <laughs> move is always my fiance. <laughs> my fiance. <laughs> That's, no, that's, my, that's, that's my defense move also. Anytime yeah. I'm in a situation or at, even like particularly at work, if I feel like a certain type of energy is coming my way, I'm like, yeah, so this weekend, me and my girl, we went to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, used to, like, I'm that guy. I used to think those people were mad annoying. I understand uh-huh. why niggas and, 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 and women just randomly place their significant other mid-conversation. Yeah. It's a defensive play. It's a defensive I'm play. Now. It's I'm effective. Like, it's effective. Um, sometimes. Peep, peep my move. I'm like, did you see my bracelet? <laughs> oh my god, you're Colombian? No, 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 no. My fiance is Colombian. <laughs> I just walked them right into it. <laughs> Defense, bro. Outstanding. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's man. All, it's you know, like, it's, pick it's, you into like a wedding ring. I need to get a wedding it's, ring. It's, it's necessary, right? You know, and we need to be. We need. We need to be appreciated for that. <sighs> That's a podcast for that's another a, day. Yeah, that's a podcast for another day, another time. When um, Exclusive I'm, pod. <laughs> yeah, that has to be super exclusive. Gentlemen only pod. Gentlemen's only. Like, we're going to give out, like, secret codes yeah. to, to, to only fellas that can listen to that episode. Yo, that's literally it. a gentleman's only pod for appreciation for the good things that we We should do it, guys. We should do, like, a guys only. I mean, our, our pod is really kind of only guys only right now. But yeah. it should be, like, a guys <laughs> Like a guys only pod, appreciating yeah. good guys, appreciating good dudes, a good defense. Absolutely, indeed, <sighs> good defense. Yeah, man. Uh, defense has sparked the offense. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna start over with my two topics. Yes. Um, the first that I have is something we talked about a few days ago. Charles Barkley on uh, the NBA on TNT on Inside the NBA Post Game Show says that NBA NFL players should get COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine first because they pay more taxes. Barkley said, I think they should let NBA players and coaches all get the vaccine. It's just my personal opinion. We need 300 million shots. Give some thousand to NBA players, NFL players, hockey players. As much taxes as these players pay, let me repeat that. As much taxes as these players play, Pay your players pay. I can't talk today. You sound they like deserve, Charles. You're doing great, actually. I do sound like Charles, right? Uh, uh, they deserve some preferential treatment. I hate this shit. You know that. You know how I, I feel about I, the I whole know how you feel about it. sports and COVID and just playing on as the rest of the world is dying. Um, I, I think he's wrong, and I think Charles is always off the off base when it comes to a lot of social issues these days. Like I just feel like he's not connected to what's happening in reality. I feel like when Charles speaks, he has one good, like maybe idea or concept, but it is clouded by like a hundred other pieces of bullshit. Like, because do I think the players should be vaccinated? I do. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be vaccinated at some point in time. 
in the next two to three years. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, they shouldn't. I think the players should be vaccinated. Is it because they pay more taxes? No. That's where you lost me, Charles. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's just like his reasoning for some of these thoughts are just like, oh, I, I don't agree. So I don't agree with it because of the basis that they pay more taxes. I just believe that right now, um, because they are play- <laughs> essential entertainers and they're, and they're playing sports, they, for, it's not even for us, for their own health. If they want to continue, forget us. If these players want to continue playing and, and going to work, right? This is work for them, not leisure. They should be vaccinated. It's for the health and safety of them and their teammates and their families, ultimately. So that's my only position on that. That's I, I mean, you know how I feel. I feel, I feel like everybody should be vaccinated. Everybody should get the vaccine. Um, there is a, a rollout and a process that is going a lot slower, I guess, than officials expected when it came when it comes to rolling out the vaccine to you know, first responders who should get it first and then the elderly and then people with underlying conditions. It should be a process, right? There should be like a ladder, a le- levels of who gets the vaccine first before, you know, the supply becomes scarce. Uh, Charles they gotta Barkley- have, They gotta have some, they gotta have jugs on that. We, we don't know though. Need to have some jugs. We don't, we don't know the, we don't know the quantity. We don't know the, um, I guess, the, the expeditiousness. Okay. Shout out to T.I., <laughs> of the um of the vaccinations and how quickly it should be happening right. you know and I, I understand where charles is coming from to a certain extent there are a lot of games that are being postponed a lot of players are missing games uh you know covid could have an impact on who wins the championship this year simply because they're not in a bubble and they are free to be outside and more open to infection than they were in the bubble so do you think you know, we go playoffs in the bubble I think we should go to the. I think they should shut it down right now and set up another bubble. Set up two bubbles. Set up one on the east, one on the west, and just work it like that. And then the only time that east, and then do it like baseball, baseball like season series. Like if you if the Knicks got two games against the Lakers, just send them to L.A. that one time, play those two games, and right back to the East Coast. And this and like in the same thing for any other team and any other any other conference. I think it was really smart for Adam Silver to create the bubble that he did last season. But like the like it's it's not getting better. Like the numbers are just getting worse every single day. And it's like we just have this tunnel vision. We just want to play these games. Let's play these games. Like they got fans in NFL stadiums for these playoff games. Let's play these games. Like it's worse than it was before when you shut it down. But now we still got to play these games. I I don't understand it. I really don't. I'm gonna watch any sport that's on television. You know that. I love NFL. I love basketball. I love playoff baseball, but I'm okay if it's not off. When it was off, I didn't die. It's a fact. I mean, I came close, but I didn't die. <laughs> Please, I need the sports. Please, I need my NBA. But I, I, I just, I just feel it's really arrogant. I feel it's really um, dense and and just like just this ignoring all the things that have happened. And like Carl Anthony Towns has COVID now, and he lost a bunch of family members to that shit. And then you got. George Hill talking about, I don't want to go by the protocols and then stay home. Well, George Hill's a different type of nigga. We knew that though. If you follow him on Instagram, you'll see that he's a different, he'd be hunting. He'd be, <laughs> kill, he'd be killing like boars. Like he'd be hunting boars. Good for him. Yeah, he just, he's just, he's just from that, he's from the mid, like Midwest. He likes that. He'll never go hungry. Never. <laughs> never. Listen, man, I can't call it, you know what I'm saying? But I think they need to do something for sure. I think a bubble is necessary. I think that's I think that's what's needed. I think that's what's going to keep everybody safe and everybody healthy. Well, you heard King and LeBron. King LeBron didn't like the bubble, not one bit. <laughs> of course they don't, because they're they're not around their families, and it would be an extended bubble. It wouldn't be like a few months. It wouldn't be like a few weeks. It would be months. It would be like where they year. wouldn't see their families. Yeah. But I mean, what do you but... like? Regular. The thing is, like regular people are dealing with this, so I don't think anybody should be exempt from any type of conditions that we have to adjust to keep people healthy when people are dying at alarming rates every fucking day. Like, how how selfish can you be? Well, the players are now on strict... Um, they basically, right now, they're not allowed to be out on the road or out at home. They're mm-hmm. not... That's, 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 that's the rule. So, like, they're pretty much on lockdown as it is. 
right but now. how long can that can that last right mm-hmm. like George Hill doesn't want to do it. We know James Harden didn't do it earlier before the season started. We know Kyrie didn't do it. Like how many other players are are you know bucking the system and, and making it seem like you know their priorities or what they want to do outweighs the public safety? It's this, it's this is just what what comes with the COVID. Yeah, you and and just to get back to on topic to Charles, like I, I just think he needs a reality check. He needs to understand that there are people in this planet that aren't as privileged as him i know he hasn't been poor in a very long time um but it, he sounds stupid saying some of the shit he says and then Shaq didn't even say anything when they were talking about it ernie and ej uh kind of shut charles barkley down but i i, I I'm, I'm not okay with him saying shit like that i'm not okay with him feeling that way and it kind of you know lends a a, a very like sick view into his mind about what he thinks about people that are you know, not as rich as him. Yeah, Charles is Charles only. Uh, Charles comes off really just not good. No, no. It's you know the whole like <clears throat> stick to sports thing where they tell athletes to stick to sports. Charles Barkley is the only person that should only stick to sports. I only want to hear what he has to say about basketball. Nothing else. Don't tell me about the sometimes, weather. Sometimes. Don't. Yeah. Some even even sometimes on that. Right. No. Crazy. I think his like his act is wearing thin. He was cool early on, and now I can also. I, like, yeah, that's, that's what I feel. Yeah, he's reaching. He's reaching. Yeah, big reach. Nasty. Um, next story that I had: courts are preying on rappers and their lyrics. In October 2017, Lawrence Montague, a Maryland man, incarcerated while awaiting trial for murder and gun-related charges, rapped a verse containing the following lyrics over a self over a jail phone to a friend. Uh, okay, just for the record, I am not a rapper. Never yeah, rapped in my I, life. Yes, you have. You rapped on this podcast. We rapped liar. on the podcast, but I think if you heard me rap, you know I'm not a rapper. <laughs> um, I'll be playing the block, bitch. And if you ever play with me, I'll give you a dream. A couple shots, snitch. It's like hockey pucks. The way I dish out this, it's a 40 when that bitch going hit up shit. That Lawrence Montague, that's 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 fire, boy. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Indeed. Like a match. Fire like a match. <laughs> um <laughs> so he uh he was actually brought up these these lyrics were brought up in his court case. And it sets a really scary precedent. And how do you feel about it? How do you how do you think this this affects hip hop or or artists going forward? It's very interesting, actually. Um, Because on one side, I could see how, like, yo, if you're rapping about things you've done, right? Mm -hmm. Like, then it's grounds to be used in the court of law, I feel like, right? But also, we do know that people inflame their lyrics for effect, right? So, like, then it becomes, like, how do you know this is, like, true or not? So... I feel like there has to be like substantial evidence that literally tie like a crime directly related to the lyrics. If it's just like somebody's imagination of what he wishes he would do with the 40 to a snitch, then like fam, let it bump, but you feel me? But like if like there's a crime that was committed and the rapper then puts out a lyric like, yeah, I shot my homie in the back, put him in the mat, you know what I mean? Like something like that, then yeah, pull that up. Fam, you said this here. Uh, I don't like it. First off, let's 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 put the accountability where it needs to be. Um, if you are an artist of any kind, rapper, country artist, R and B singer, and you shoot somebody in the face on Tuesday, January third, and then you go into the studio and say, "I shot him in the face Tuesday, January third. I was wearing white and black and my Jordans." <laughs> Okay. You deserve anything that comes to you because you're a fucking idiot. You shouldn't rap about things that you're guilty of. Sensationalize it. Say so you shot him with an Uzi. Say so you shot him with a tank. Say so you like Yo. blew him up with a bomb. Like do some other shit. What do you have on his feet? Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordans on his feet. Um 
But I think it's just a really bad precedent. Listen, like there are country artists out there who sing about killing their <clears throat> wives and, you know, throwing their husbands out of windows when they cheat. Like that's that's just what country music is. And is that what country certain, music is? At a certain, yeah, country music is listen to a country song, read some country lyrics. It's wild shit. There's murder, there's betrayal, there's adultery, there's all this shit. I think if you target rappers for rapper lyrics and bring them in court, that is a that is targeting a specific group. Right. So that's you the are thing targeting too. black men. Yeah. If if that's if that's what your precedent is for convicting for convicting black men and putting them in prison where you want them anyway. Right. Make it so, universal. If you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna drop this this rule and use lyrics in the court of law, it can't be hip hop lyrics. It has to be all lyrics so we can hear them country songs. I don't think it should be any lyrics. That. I think if somebody committed if, a crime, your burden is a proof is on the state to prove that they committed that crime. And like create like your creativity can't be held against you. I don't think right, so. Right. That's just me. Right. And there's the only reason certain people's creativity is held against them is if it's not good. That's the only way. If your shit is funny, people don't give a fuck. If you if your thoughts are profound, if your rhymes rhyme the right way, not like this shit. If you got a dope beat behind it, people don't give a fuck. As long as it's fire, we don't right. care. But as right. soon as it's not Literally, fire, we gotta, I do not care about lyrics either. I know you don't. And then actually, we <laughs> shady as fuck. If it's, <laughs> if it's um, the only way we break it down and scrutinize it, if it's is if it's trash. If it's fire, we're beating our heads to it. Um, dancing to it and having a good time. But I don't think right. you should be able to use lyrics against somebody in court. I do think that targets a specific group. I don't think it's ever going to target anybody other than black men and women. I really don't. It's a fact. And I don't th- yeah. that, on, on that note, I definitely agree. Leave that shit out of the courthouse. Indeed. And on Indeed. Hot 97. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Oh, yeah, because they once, remember, oh, who was it? It was a little Kim or Game. They did a freestyle Hot 97 back in the day, and they actually did that shit. Like, Game actually shot at somebody, and I think, like, Lil' Kim had some shooters and some shit like that. It was wild. It was crazy. Okay, man, the shooter. Okay, Kim. Of course. Okay, okay, of course. Okay, okay, okay. Indeed. Hmm? Used oh, to be scared. I'm not going to rap. I'm not going to rap anymore. I'm not going to rap anymore. What you got? What you got for the people? I got a couple of things. On Wednesday, we welcome our new president. President-elect Joe Biden. Joe BZ. Big, big Bs. Joey B. <laughs> O-head. <laughs> <laughs> grandpa president. President Gramps. grandpa. Great grandpa. Great grandpa. Yeah, hey, you're right about that. Yeah. Um, no, with with that being said, I actually want with with everything that happened last week, I think, well, yeah, last week or two weeks ago two at weeks the ago. Capitol, um, I kind of just wanted to talk about how the inauguration is setting up and how there's heightened security. I was talking to my buddy. He's a Navy officer down in D.C. He mm. said that he can't even go to work in his uniform because that is a security issue right now because they, they don't know who, you know what I'm saying, is, is out there trying to get them so that right now they're asking all of those officers to go to work in civilian clothes and then wow. change. Yeah, it's like that. And that's, that's just, and he's just, he, uh, he, I'm sorry, he's in the Air Force. He's an Air Force officer. So, like, that's mm-hmm. like crazy that it's even to that extent. Um, so, basically, wanted to talk about how the security's ramping up. Um, they sent over, well, after the attacks at the Capitol, they sent 2,000 troops, uh, National Guard troops from Jersey up on buses up to the mm-hmm. Capitol. And now DC are closing streets all across DC, um, heightened security just throughout. And I'm just wondering, are we gonna have an inauguration? They're trying to find out if the same group is going to plan another attack because they're receiving threats. And I just think it's so crazy because these people are Trump supporters. They're terrorists. They are terrorists. Um, we'll, we'll definitely have an inauguration. I think security is necessary. Um, you know what? Something like I, I had a thought, and this is like way off the rails. Like I've been really PC the past few episodes. PC. I think so. Yeah. Well, you're right. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like I've been soft. Get it off then. I Get it been, off. I haven't been pushing the envelope. Um, so I'll do that from now from now on. I'll push the envelope. 
for the rest of this episode. And maybe okay. some. I mean, I got to see how pushing the envelope goes, uh, you know, goes along with wifey. See if she's <coughs> okay with that. But then, after that, yeah, if she's okay with it, then I'll yeah, continue check, to do it. Check in. I'll check first. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I think there will be an inauguration. I think that the threat of anything really happening, I was actually talking about this the other day um, to somebody. I don't think anything's going to happen. I, I really don't have faith and trust in that group of people that stormed the Capitol. I feel like they had a specific motivation. That specific motivation has kind of tapped out. Like he's going to move out before the inauguration even happens. He's not going to be in D.C. He's going to be in Florida. He's going to be your neighbor. Um, yeah, that's your nigga now. Um, you should take him out for a few drinks. That nigga is three hours away from me by car. I won't be seeing him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't think that there's any credible threats. I do think there'll probably be some protests or some demonstrations because them niggas are just like fucking like clowns that can't sit still. Um, but I don't anticipate anything crazy happening. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it's not. That would just it would just give people more of a reason to look at America as a big fucking joke. I mean, you know we already are. After, after I know. The past four years. We don't need more of this. After the after after the past four years, we're that six at the club. That's what we are right Damn, now. Damn, we're the six. We're the six. Damn. We're that six at the club. That thinks she's what do you think the, is the most popping? Like, like, where do you, where would you want to be from? Right now. I mean, right now. Are you proud to be an American right now? Um, I mean, I think of myself as as a black man before I think of myself as an American. Fact. I think of myself as a Trini. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can't listen. There's no other country I want to live in. At least now. Maybe when I retire. You know where I'm moving. Reno. But it's not, but it's not like it's nothing crazy. It's still part of the US of A. But it's just better than here. Where's that? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. That's a good place to retire. I'm I am posted at 50 this, years old in Puerto that's Rico. That's a good place to retire. Yeah. Posted. I, I'd, 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 I'd live in Costa Rica. You really like Costa Rica, huh? That that did something to yeah. you. Did a little number on you. I'd live in Costa Rica. Could you? I would. It's like rainforesty, though. As the rain f- season and dry season. Okay, okay, okay. Dry season is a always way longer than the rain season, and <clears throat> it's. I mean, you save up enough money, spend like take care of your money right. You can live like a king down there. Yeah, I'm out. I'm. I'm definitely. I'm. I'm living on an island, fam. What am I living in the states for? You so know you know. I mean? um, yeah, like I, I don't know. I, as far as like being proud to be an American, I guess I am. I guess. Cool. I mean, I, you know, I'm sure there are opportunities that we both had that we wouldn't have anywhere else. No, for um, sure. I just, I was actually more so like thinking like, where, which, which country gets the most like? Oh, you're, are you British? Oh, you're lit. Like right, because like right now, it's like you're American joke. So like, what country has it right now? I don't want to be from Britain because I don't like their rap. You know what? Um, you know what they rap, bro? I don't like when they rap like this. And then they go a little faster like that. Skip that. Skip that. Skip that. <laughs> I hate that shit. I hate that shit so much. Yeah. I drive a fast car. Drive really fast. Yeah. Because she like me, I give her a drink. Like, come on. <laughs> what is that? That's good shit. <laughs> That's good shit. Huh. <laughs> so, so basically what you're telling me is whichever country you're from has to have great hip hop. I think they do. Okay. And there's no other country that has great hip hop but America. That Britain shit is garbage. <laughs> Jesus. It is. You know what actually sounds pretty decent? Like Portuguese rap actually sounds pretty decent. Trevor, you're not gonna convince I don't know Portuguese what the fuck rap. they're saying. Yeah, no chance. But I but it sounds better than the British shit. The I run fast, she catch me, she can't, she don't know. Like, what is that? <laughs> bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love Again, it for like, for like two songs. Again, a Dell feature and be lit. Oh, that's good heat. That apparently, would be heat, right? Apparently, Adele and uh, Beyonce are going to collab soon. That would be nice. Be Adele's nice. really talented. That'd be that'd be nice. Great um, voices, indeed. My second topic is since we're recording today on MLK Day, indeed. and in just kind of the lieu of just a past year that we did have, um. Dr. King's speech still resonates today. It's been 58 years Which since uh, his I Have a Dream speech. Oh. 
Uh, he has better speeches. I know he has better speeches, but I just figured today. Yo, what's up with you? I, just, I told you I'm done being PC. I'm done. Yeah, I'm he has done. better speeches, but I just figured today. Let me just tap into the, one of MLK's most famous speeches, just uh-huh. to see some of the words he was saying, and just like it really just applies to what's going on today. And I wanted mm-hmm. to read some of it, and I'll leave out some of the applause. Um, but. It says, I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Um, And then I skip down a little bit. He had a dream that his four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Mm -hmm. And for me, the reason why this hits for me is because two things. I was pulled over last week in Valley Stream, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was, it it was, it was a matter of just being black, right? Just a cop trailed me, pulled me over in the middle of the day, whatever. But he says that all men are created equal. And this is not about being pulled over or anything like that, but it is very evident that all men are still not equal here in the States. So 58, 58, 58 years later, mm-hmm. like we're still fighting for the same thing. We're still fighting for equality. The NBA players, the, 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 the athletes write equality on their shirt. Um, we had a movement. We, we just want to be equal. And it's just crazy how it's the same message. It still hits that way. And then for me, um, the line where he says the color of their skin, but uh, not judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character, that's always how I've been. I've always, like you said, you're not an American first, you're a black man first. Um, I don't want to be associated with any really group. I want people to just to, to judge me based on my character, how I treat mm-hmm. others, how I deal with in situations, like who I am as a person, not who I am because of how I look. And so with that being said, in remembrance of Emma Martin Luther King, um, you know, his his words are still alive. Um, his mission is still, his agenda is still relevant today. And it's, I feel like it just motivates me even more to continue striving to make sure that people view me for my character first, always, no matter what, um, as I as we fight to be equal in this world. So that's that's always the goal, to hope that when people see you, they judge you by your character, not the color of your skin or any preconceived notions they may have about the group you are associated with. Um, I've been looking at like a few different speeches, and I just pulled up one, Unfulfilled Dreams uh, by Dr. King. So during the latter parts of his life, this one was a speech that he gave on March 3rd, and, and then he died. He was assassinated the next month after that. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of the later ones kind of held America accountable to the words in the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, just basically saying, hey, like, these are the promises that you gave to all your citizens, but we don't have those those same promises. Um, that's the kind of the MLK that I resonate with the most. It was kind of a it was a person that, you know, toiled for so many years, sacrificed so much of his personal life and his family life to you know, really educate the white man and educate the power structure on the benefits of including us in this thing called America, in this thing called the American dream. And throughout his time and and and, and work doing that and not seeing the results that he'd like to see, it was kind of like, okay, dog, seriously, this is what you said in this fucking pa- in this piece of paper. <laughs> and like, you can't do this? Right. My nigga, you can't do this. So that's like kind of when I resonate with, um, I'm going to read this quote. It, it uh, centers around Mahatma Gandhi, who didn't like black people. It's people who didn't know that. <laughs> he was a, a, a really big racist. Um, so he says, now first let us notice that life is a continual story of shattered dreams. The name of this speech is Unfulfilled Dreams. Mahatma Gandhi labored for years for the independence of his people. And through a great and nonviolent revolution, he was able to win that independence. He struggled to unite his people and to have India as one great unified country. But Gandhi had to face the fact that he was assassinated and died with a broken heart because that nation ended up being divided between India and Pakistan as a result of the conflict between the Hindus and the Muslims. 
Life is a long, continual story of setting out to build a great temple and not being able to finish it. So Dr. King's life is him building this great temple of unity and equity between two people, two groups, or America and black people, really, and it not being finished. And I always feel like that's really sad, especially given the way that he, yeah, given the way that he was murdered um, and him probably foreseeing the fact that he wouldn't live to see a lot of the work that he put in or to see, you know, us flourish the way that we are in 2021. Uh, but had faith that it would happen because he was a man of faith. And, you know, that's something that I will always, you know, respect and admire him understanding that he will see, you know, and that we all will see the mountaintop, mountaintop at some point And that, you know, since his assassination, we've gotten a little bit closer to that mountaintop, not anywhere where we'd like to be, but, you know, still a whole lot closer. Still so, fighting. Indeed. And we have to keep still fighting, climbing. still climbing um, until we reach that point. And Absolutely. we will, man. We might not see it in our lifetime. Um, but something I was talking to a friend of mine about was just like, right now we are we are living in our parents' labor, right? Yeah. Us being able to sit here and podcast, right, is because our parents sacrificed so we can go to school, so we can get an education, so we can major in communications and chase our dreams, right? Like, that's just the reality of this story. And... This is a stepping stone for the next generation to empower them to do more things. So I think we might not see this right now in our lifetime. Martin Luther King wasn't able to see it in his lifetime. But as we keep laying down the groundwork and the foundations, eventually, if we keep instilling good values and and, and making great sacrifices and not letting up on the fight, we will see some really great results. Um, And our kids will see the great results. And, and you I'm can be. Making, I'm done making sacrifices. They need I mean, these white people to get this shit together. Oh, I mean, I'm not talking about sacrifice for the whites. I'm talking about sacrificing for just our families, so we can be in better positions. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's not on us. You know, I always say that it ain't us. We done. We done the work. We do the work. These <clears throat> things need to get this shit together. Indeed. I mean, shit. You saw that they what they were doing at the Capitol. They don't even. They don't even trust each other. Yeah. They can't even get their own shit together. It's a fact. God damn. And it was crazy because we made that parallel last weekend. Like they went out to this, this riot and fuck shit up. Like we went out to protest and got tacos afterwards. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. So next up, guys, we got our two current events topics and one along the lines of some topics that we've discussed earlier. Of course, like, you know, earlier last year when we had the homegirl Kashima on the show, shout out to you. We talked about the fab situation with him and his wife. And we have something really similar right now. Anybody who's been watching the news knows that Dr. Dre suffered a brain aneurysm, I want to say, two weeks ago. Yep. And was in the hospital. Uh, You know, luckily, he's recovered. We've gotten updates from Snoop and um, and LL Cool J. He posted a picture of him in the studio, you know, on the road to recovery. So definitely thankful that one of our, you know, legends, icons in hip hop is, is healthy. But then we also are dealing with the divorce. Um, Dr. Dre and his ex-wife, Nicole Young, are going through a really nasty divorce. She's asking for a lot of money. He's saying no. Um, and now she is alleging that she was the victim of abuse at his hands for years and years and years. And these you know, stories are kind of nasty. She said that he put a gun to her head a few times. Um, she did call the police once on him when they were together before they were married back in, I think, 98 or 99. And it just brings back, brings me back to this whole thing of how do we deal with our heroes being potentially these type of people? Not my hero, but, um, (laughs) definitely... For I mean, I'm not shocked, bro. I'm not like I'm not shocked by these things. I'm not I'm never shocked. I don't know why people are shocked by these things. Um people have issues, people grew up with issues, people express themselves in very nasty manners sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's highlighted because they're celebrities. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? This shit's going on right now at your next door neighbor's house. Sad to say, but it's the, it's the world we live in, right? So when I when I hear things like 
Dr. Dre. What I hear when I hear this is like, yo, shorty, you now leaving and you now getting divorced after years of abuse. It just sounds convenient, really. I mean that's 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 a perspective. That's that's I know the that there perspective are, I have. There are a lot there are a lot of women who who do spend a lot of time with their abusers because they feel like they have no way out. Um, they feel like they don't have the support or the resources to get out, and they feel like they don't want to you know mess up their family unit. They don't want to you know uh, disrupt their children or their children's school life or home life. So that's what a lot of women sacrifice, I guess, to to stay in that situation. Um, I mean, she was, she's been with him for a lot, for a long time. There are a lot of people that would think if they're getting divorced, she deserves half. Sure. I don't even agree with that. You don't agree that she deserves half? I don't agree with, I don't agree with, I don't agree that because we were married, anyone deserves half. So that's that. Ooh, spicy. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I don't. I, w- I would say, I wouldn't my say. Heart on my empire, my hard earned money. What, but like, she's a part of that. No, that's fine. She's, half, a, she's so, a part of that. That's fine. My thing is half is the word for me. I don't think they deserve yeah. half. Do I, I sure mean, you I, want a percentage? Like if, sure. You need you need enough to survive? Sure. But I'm not gonna sit here and say because we were married, you deserve to have to upkeep your lifestyle to upkeep this lifestyle. No, that's also not true. I'm tired of seeing that. Sorry. I, I mean I, I get a job I get where you're coming. Get I get, a, get no, job. you're right. No, you're right. Everybody, if you got to support yourself, get a job. Everybody does it. Um, but if you help build, I mean, it's like the Jeff Bezos divorce, right? Like she walked away with a billy, more than a billion dollars. And it was because like she holds, like there's this value in holding down the home front. That's fine. There's value in being a support system for your man if, if he needs that. Um, there's value in, you know, helping have those conversations when it comes to business, like there's value in all of that. So I don't, I mean, I don't, I mean, Dr. Dre is worth a lot of money and he's recently come into this money because he recently, you know, sold beats to Apple. Right. You know, so when they got together, yeah, he was rich, but now he's wealthy. Yeah. Um, and he didn't accrue that wealth by himself. You know, it was a lot of people along the way that gave him the time, the support to build that wealth. And she's one of them. That's cool. So to me, support isn't doesn't equate to half. I think it could. I think in some cases it does. Some. I think in, in this case it does. And it also in this case, like we got to deal with the fact that Dr. Dre has had a lot of nasty shit said about him for a very long time. Right. Which and this is, is not this is not this is not the first time that like somebody has said you put hands on me like from a woman's perspective. So we also got to deal with that and say, hey, like what does like with these allegations most likely being true. Like, what does she deserve to walk away with? Well, with that, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what you, you about to say half? What are you going to say? Her pride. Her pri- I mean, I'm, listen, like, I mean, her pride probably got to the point where she felt like she could leave. No, I'm saying walk away with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's probably the most. Yeah, but you got to, but you got to eat though. And listen. No, and I, no I understand women... you have to eat. I'm just saying like, what do you, like, what do you walk away with right now? You. It's less about the focusing on the money and just, yo. If you if, if you've been in a relationship where you've been abused, get out first. Worry about the money after. Like your mental no, she, health she is get important. Out. Now, yeah, now she's worried about the money. <laughs> now she's worried about the money, which right. I think she should. And I and I and I do think that when it comes to being married to a high profile guy, like life after that isn't as easy as just getting a job for some of these women. And I'm not saying that like they are starving or anything like that, but. It's, it's very tough once you get out from under that for people to look at you and be like, I'm going to give you a regular nine to five or I'm going to give you a job here with all the stuff that they see in the in, in the stories about you. And when it comes to Dr. Dre being the businessman that he is, who's really going to look at, who's going to really go like, you know, and cross him to uplift her? I think she should get money to for to survive for the rest of her life. Sure. Do I think she deserves half of his empire? No, I don't. But... I'll say 40%. I would never go half. Half is crazy, I'll say 40%. Man. 40% is a lot. 40 is great. I think 40% is good. But like, to your point about our heroes, yo, just men in general just need to do better. A gun to her head? I can't even, I can't even fathom. He's been accused of this stuff before, though. It doesn't make it right. I'm saying a gun, to, a gun to someone's head is a threat yeah. of, of, of life. Mm-hmm. Crazy. 
It is nuts. It is nuts. And if it's true, he should be held accountable and go to jail for the rest of his life. Sure. Um, the next current event I had, it's just like more morbid, morbid COVID stuff. Um, yeah, a C- I the read CDC... that this morning. I was like, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the um the CDC director says that uh, by mid February we could have half a million COVID nineteen deaths. <laughs> And um, in the next month, we could lose 100,000 more people. Can I no comment on that? Sure. I, listen, we just we playing our games. We playing our football games. Got fans in the stands in some basketball games. Lil Bow Wow got concerts going on. You saw that? Lil Bow Wow had a concert in Houston, packed pack club. Niggas really like to go see Bow Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Risk their life to go see Bow Wow perform one last time. If that's the last. If that's the last thing you see in life is Bow Wow on stage. Wow. Who's the, who's the one artist you want to see one time before you pass? Oh, that's easy. Come on, answer that question. Jigga, what's my <laughs> motherfucking, motherfucking name? name? Jigga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I too need to see Jigga. I've never I've never been disappointed by a live whole performance. <laughs> Seen five of them. Jeez. Want to make it? Want to make it five more? That's hopefully. crazy. I've seen like five Drake performances, <laughs> and one in London, and one in Toronto. Did he bring out? Uh, he brought out uh, everybody. Skepta. Um, my man Drake. He come to UK. We rap together. Yeah, basically he came out. He brought. Out, he brought. Out, he brought. He brought the, the whole UK fam, yeah. and he turned the old two into the old three. That's what he did. God. It was at the old two. Turned into the old three. Okay, got it. Anyway, um, for our relationship topic this week, cuffing season. Ooh, we are in deep in the middle of cuffing season. It usually starts when you say cuffing season starts October. Yeah, in New York. <laughs> in New York, there's no cuffing season in, in Florida. Nah, I think there is. I think it's cuffing there's season. There's no everywhere. season to cuff, boy. Here, but it's the but we have holidays, right? Maybe the like ho- maybe that it's, okay. Christmas cuffing season is shorter in Florida because it's just for the holidays. Yeah, I would say that. So in New York, I would Coquito say it starts around October. Girl. Yeah, October to March, cuffing season in New York. Say so that's a, a good a safe estimate. Yeah. Um, April, April is April. You have to shed the weight. <laughs> got to. You got it. When you shed the weight, do you mean shed the cuff shed or the, shed, shed the, the cuff. shed the physical shed weight? The, both. Uh, <laughs> it goes hand in hand. Damn, baby, I got a skin here. You gotta go. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, this article basically uh expresses that cuffing season is extended or was extended in 2020 simply because of the pandemic and because of quarantine. So it's like you can't really have a summer out here thotting it up at La Marina, which doesn't exist anymore, but if it did, it would be thotted up. Um, because of COVID, do you feel like there's been an extended cuffing season? Because, of, like, how many, like, what resulting relationships have you seen because of COVID besides mine? It's gonna be like, hi, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> besides mine, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've I haven't seen much relationships. I've just heard about a lot of flings. Okay. Okay. Um, no real relationships coming out of it, but more flings. Actually, a lot of my friends kind of just got into like a serious relationship. So cuffing season is like turned into like fucking cuffing preliminaries. Like it's just cuffing engaged marathon. Season. Yeah, engaged season, marathon season, baby season. Like a lot of this is a baby boom, big baby boom. You it's know what a saying? baby boom. I got like three friends doing April. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, crazy. this is like what, what were y'all doing? I know I I did the I did the math. Did <laughs> COVID babies. So no, I, I, think, I think it's beautiful. A lot of COVID babies. I think what what what, what cuffing season has turned into is like yo, <laughs> especially in the height of this pandemic, it's like we might be the last ones. Let's just, <laughs> let's just make it count. Let's just get, make as many more <laughs> as we can. Yo, CDC just said five hundred thousand more deaths. It could be us. Let's, hey, we got we got to make five hundred thousand more babies. Yeah, Let's we, go. And and people are going, which I think is, I Indeed. think it's cool. I think it's I think actually, in one way, people are just kind of like focusing on what it is that they want and less distracted yeah. with all the you know the buffets. <laughs> They're loving me? on their loved ones. Yeah, loving which on is their good, loved ones, which is which is good. 
Um, yeah, there are less options. Way less options. And I feel like before COVID, we can go outside. Everybody feels like they have more options, especially with social media. Niggas think they have all the options in the world when it comes to social media. Yeah. All the options in the world. Yeah, social media is delusional. Yeah, it is delusional. delusional it's a, it's a, false, a false sense of what you have available to you instead of appreciating what you have in front of you. Ooh, that was a bar. Who are you today? Look at that. Look, look at you Man. in the blue. Look at me. It's, it's the blue. It's the blue today. Um, there In this article, it says, uh, in the early days of March of last year, dating.com, didn't realize that was a website, reported an 82 increase in global online dating. Bumble saw a 26 incre- 26% increase in, mes- in message exchanges, while elite dating app Inner Circle reported a 116% increase. Wow. So that's where people are spending their time. Yeah. It's, it is... But- it's it's a wild wild west right now. <laughs> it is a lot of shooting, a lot of drive bys. A drive-bys. lot of shooting, a lot of drive bys. A lot of drive bys. I feel like it's a lot of small talk though. Feel me? But you, dating, 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 I don't miss that. I think that's what's beneficial about like just having one on one time because once the small talk is over, like if you don't feel Fuck. like getting deep with somebody, then you just it's just a wrap. Yeah, it's I I I'm I'm very happy that I'm not dating right now. I'm never doing it again. Tell you that much. Tell you that much. Sorry. Never again. Yeah, if you know never, if you know it's ever, good for you. Ever. Yeah. Ever. I'm going to make this shit work. <laughs> shit. Fact. <laughs> Big facts. Fact. <laughs> if that's yo, if there's one thing that COVID has taught me, it's going to make this shit work. You're going to make some shit work. You're Absolutely. Shit I think work. that's good. That's a good attitude to have. Yeah. When you feel like you got so many options that you can just like throw good people or valuable people to the side, things get fucked up and you always regret that. Yeah, big fact. Always, indeed. Stay cuffed. Stay cuffed, my friends. To the um, right ones, though. To stay the right cuffed. Ones. Don't cuff the wrong ones. To the right one, yes. Don't cuff the wrong ones. Um, for sports. Sports, sports, sports. Sports. Sports, 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 guys. So, of course... Things happen as soon as we stop recording. <laughs> like as soon as we hit stop and get up and take the headphones off, some shit pops off. So Standard. James Harden is now a New York resident. He's a Brooklyn net, put up a triple double in his first game. And he sets up this big three or big two, who knows what Kyrie is, um, of Harden, <laughs> KD, and maybe Kyrie. Yeah. Are they the champions? No. Eastern Conference, though, for sure. Okay. East- you think if all three are engaged, got good chemistry, they still don't beat the Lakers? I'm no longer falling for what's on paper. Last year, mm-hmm. we were on paper like the Clippers are the best team in LA. Right? I mean, I never thought that. I mean, we didn't, but because we, we yeah. know what it is, but that's what the streets would say. So I don't care what's on paper no more. I got to see results. I got to see dominance. I got to see them three work. Now, let's speculate a little bit. Sure. If they get it going, who can fucking stop them? Nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think, I don't think anybody can. If they can get yeah. it going, no one can stop them. But the big thing in there is if, because <laughs> where is Kyrie Irving? We still don't know. We still don't know. Still looking for him. He's not under my coaster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, I think sometimes we try to look at things and overcomplicate it. We try to say, this is our analysis. They need this type of chemistry. They got to run this type of play. They are all, they are three of the top 15 players in the league, all on the same team. They're coming at the East. They're going to win the championship. Okay. In theory. No, they are. That's, that is me. That is my take. They're going to win the championship. Okay. This year. Okay. Now, I do have a theory that says Steve Nash doesn't make it to the end of the season. Oh, come on. What is that? That Steve Nash is replaced. With who? Like a David Blatt situation with the Cavs. With who? I don't know. Why is Steve Nash replaced? I just... 
Do you really feel like Steve Nash has the pulse of that like team? Do you feel like he like runs that team? That he's the guy that they look to? I don't I I, I think it's I think it's like he, I think he's 10 games in, bro. <laughs> his first head coaching job. But I but I I just even with the whole Kyrie situation. We know that like Kyrie where, like 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 where where where's the equity? Where like what time has Steve Nash like spent building equity with Kyrie Irving? Understandable Kyrie Irving's behavior is not in COVID. It's not um we're not making excuses for it. Like he should be a professional, he should be an adult. Um but like what equity has Steve Nash built with Kyrie where he doesn't know where his player is? It's Kyrie Irving, bro. Brad Stevens had issues with him. Ty Lue had issues with him. You know what I'm saying? Like uh David Blatt had issues with this guy. Like you know what I'm saying? So like it's Kyrie. But never something like this. Never him going missing. And his he, coach and his coach in public saying, I don't know where he is. That's another thing, too. Why would you say that to, to, the, to the press? Why would you admit that to, to the press? Him know he's, even if like, it's a lie. To let him know he's like, yo, this is dead ass the truth. This nigga's off the rails. No, but you can't. You shouldn't do that. I'm not his dad. I'm his coach. He's a, you're right. He's you're a his man. If, if, you're his, if you're his dad, yeah, you put out a missing, a missing person sign. You put him on a milk carton. If you're his coach, you say, yeah, Kyrie's taking, t- taking care of some personal stuff. You know, he'll be back in a few days. That's all you say. We've seen. You don't that. put him out there like no, that. No one. No, but we've seen how these guys do media. Everyone does media in a sus way. I don't know. I think Steve Nash makes it to the end of the season. I definitely do. Um, but that's an interesting take. I'm not sure about. I'm not 100 percent on that take. Just to let you guys know, I'm maybe 50 50 on it. But I do think they win the championship. If they get it together, sure. They will get. They, they don't have to get it together. All they have to do is be on the court at the same time. And who's going to guard them? They can give up 150 points, they'll score 170. Who's gonna there's nobody that can guard them? It's bad. Who you gonna double team? Who you gonna trap? <laughs> Kevin. Exactly. You but like my thing is like you take out Kevin. Ugh, it's bad. It's bad matchups. <laughs> it's just all bad. <laughs> That's a sick. They're sick niggas for that. It's nuts. It's nuts. And they really don't have a bench, but they don't need a bench. They don't. Because there's three of them. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I just think don't I just I just don't want to overcomplicate it. People are gonna analyze it because they have to and they gotta like fill airtime on ESPN. It's not complicated to me. <laughs> They're the best team. They're gonna win it. They're gonna win it all. Okay. You're a Knicks fan though, so I'll cheer for them when they win the championship. Okay. The New York team. Okay. And the Knicks are going in the right direction. And honestly, in two years, the Knicks will be in a much better position than the Brooklyn Nets are. Okay. <laughs> They don't have no draft picks. We'll revisit the. Oh, well, yeah, they gave everything we, away. They don't have no draft picks. Thirsty. Let's see if they get the chip. I think they will. I think they will. Um, NFL playoffs. The Buccaneers beat the Saints. Drew Brees, who I said was washed up, <laughs> proved it. Proved that he is washed like faded black jeans. Hmm. Um, he is likely to retire. And uh, Tom nice. Brady going to the NFC Championship game. Tom, man. Impressive. Greatest ever. Impressive. Without a doubt. Impressive. <laughs> Greatest ever, without a doubt. I, I, I'm excited to see this new matchup, this Tom versus Aaron Rodgers. Like, listen, man, there was a lot of comparisons this year of, like, is Aaron Rodgers better than Tom Brady without the rings, blah, 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 blah. We'll see on Sunday. Okay. We will see on Sunday. We'll see on Indeed. Sunday. I'm excited. Is Patrick Mahomes excited. Okay. We'll see on Man, Sunday. That nigga couldn't do anything. He couldn't get his feet under him after that hit. Really? Um, but the Chiefs still win. Browns, you know, put up a really good effort, really good season by them, you know, without OBJ, because nobody needs him to win. Um Well, they didn't win, so I guess maybe they could have used another two. I don't know. I mean I don't know. I don't know. They got to the I don't know. They got to the division around the playoffs for the first time yeah, in like eighty years. Maybe they were missing a piece. I don't know, bro. I don't know. No, nah, I don't think not OBJ. Not that wasn't the piece they were missing. Maybe I don't know. We don't know. We don't know if it would have been different. I can't say that. <laughs> My mom texted me mid game. Hey, where's Odell? <laughs> <laughs> great text from mom. That's a great text. Yeah. And my mom awesome is text. also, I called her this morning because she loves Drew Brees and the Saints. Uh huh. Even went to New Orleans, c- catch a game a couple years ago. So she had her Saints jersey okay. on and she was sick this morning. 
Mm, not damn. good. Not good for the mom. That's not. I, I no, that's not good. For mom, she was sick. I feel bad now too. Yeah, she was really tight. I feel bad now too. Damn. Damn it, Drew. <laughs> damn, Drew. Disappoint my mom. Damn, Drew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the Bills beat the Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson got hurt and had to leave the game. Also. The Bills going to the AFC Championship game for the first time since 1994. Stephon Diggs, you're... Stephon Diggs, beast. Beast wide receiver. Uh, like we said before, the Packers going to the NFC Championship game. That. They beat the I Rams. for Stephon Diggs, man. Leading the, yeah. lead the league in receptions. Like, I mean, like, dude, first of all, like, it's great to see one, like, now obviously the Bills were solid last year, but how one player can really make a difference on your offense and like mm-hmm. it's just a testament to like his stardom because every we were talking Julio Jones, we were talking Hopkins, we were talking Odell, yep. we were talking whoever else. Stefan just went up up north. And he's the last man standing. Last as man far as standing. Like great, great right, great wide receivers left in the playoffs. Yeah, man. So big shouts to Stephon Diggs. I'm excited to see who makes it out of these championship games. Uh give me your early predictions. Chiefs, Chiefs Packers in the Super Bowl. Chiefs Packers in the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers is, is playing at Patty a Mahomes ridiculous okay? level. I think he will be by Sunday. Okay. He got knocked the fuck out, but I think he'll okay. I think so he'll be okay. Not by confirming Sunday. the concussion. He definitely got a concussion. Okay. Yeah, he got two good eyes. You can see he had a concussion. He got when he got up, he couldn't even stand up. Like his eyes were like in the back of his head. It was not. It was not a cool sight to see. It was. It wasn't anything I would wish on anybody. But I think he'll be fine by Sunday. I think the Chiefs beat the Bills. I don't know. I think that's going to be a close game, though. I think it will be. But the Chiefs defense is really good. Yeah. And the Packers, I think the Packers and I think the Packers are going to destroy the Buccaneers. How did AB play us? Um, not that great. He didn't, I don't think he only had one catch. But they didn't need him. You know, they still won. Still um, won. but I think the Packers are going to demolish, demolish, demolish the Buccaneers. It'll be, it'll be a sight to see, man. Um yeah. MLK today. Um, so mm-hmm. it's actually like second best day in basketball. The schedule. I know you don't. Yeah. I know you hate sports, but right now we got the <laughs> Ma- Magic and Knicks playing. We got the Timberwolves and the Hawks later. Pistons mm-hmm. in the Heat. Spurs and the Blazers. Suns and the Grizzlies. <laughs> Nets and the Bucks. So honestly, all those games were trash to me. It got better at Nets and Bucks. I'm excited to see that a potential Lakers Warriors Eastern- tonight. Yes. Too, right? Yes, Lakers Warriors as well. So a potential Eastern Conference matchup tonight. And then mm-hmm. Lakers Warriors, some good spice. Uh, I don't think that would be a close game unless Steph gets 60 again, um, Steph- which is possible. It's always possible. Which is possible. But be- Absolutely. Because I fell in love with like sports betting recently, I can tell you bet- Steph is not one to rely on. Okay. <laughs> Don't rely on stuff. I, I, let me tell you a couple of dudes you cannot rely on. Okay, I'm sure you got. I'm sure you got a list. Harrison Barnes. Don't rely on that nigga. He's trash. Come, well, you you would if you if you ask Harrison Barnes who to rely on, he wouldn't say him. Listen, the thing is, they know that he's not reliable, so they set his numbers so low. It's like yeah, it's, it's, it's low hanging him. fruit. Yeah. The other, the other day they were like Harrison Barnes combined for uh, 15 points and. Three assists, whichever way like you get it. Rebounds. Which, whichever way you get it, he just needs to combine with points and assists for like 18. Uh huh. <sighs> 18 and a half. Got like, got like 12. Gave you, gave you 15, but but no, like he just he's just not good. Because it was the, well, he's not person. a he's not a person that you can like rely on for those numbers. No. If you if you want it like somebody like I, I guess maybe somebody like a hmm, who's like comparable to Harrison Barnes but actually gets good numbers. I'm not even gonna say I was gonna say Wesley Matthews, but he's been trash. Wesley, uh, Wesley's disappointing on my Lakers. I'll say maybe a Kyle Kuzma. No, get off my Lakers for a second. He's like an Al Horford. Al Horford's been balling though. Well, yeah, but Actually, he's, he's not like Al Horford. Harrison Barnes is trash. He's in a category all by himself. Don't rely on him. Jamal Murray, fraud. Okay, really. Yeah, he has been a fraudulent. This bubble season. man. He's been very fraudulent. No, this fraud. Um, he's the bubble boy. <laughs> not bubble bu- man. Bubble boy. Bubble boy. Bubble boy. A lot of guys. I can, I can keep going, man. Of people who just betrayed me night in, night out. Patrick Beverly. So personally. 
You would too. <laughs> That's why I don't gamble, man. I told you, I, I, I would be so, I'd be, a, I'd be sick. It's like little five dollar joints, but like it's just like, yo, you're. I'm not asking you for a lot. You are. You're asking them for money. No, I'm not. I'm asking them to do their job. <laughs> Make a three, LeBron. They have to be accountable. The other day, to you the now. other day, I almost said this. you. You tell them to do their job, and they got to do it. <laughs> yeah, Ali. Yeah, don't bet, guys. It's not. It's it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, we see. You are the, you are like the PSA for not betting. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that was funny. <laughs> um, that's sports. You got anything else? Anything else up in the tank? No, I'm taking a nap right after this pod. Good, good, good move. I might do the same thing. Yeah, big time Monday MLK nap, then wake up some video games, and then catch that Bucks and Nets. Because if you think, I'm look gonna, at your day. Because if you think, oh, I have to stop and get groceries at some point, but. There we go. Back to reality. <laughs> yeah, right. Wifey's like, <laughs> you thought. <laughs> you were going down this list. She heard she was like, when is he going to mention groceries? When is he going to do groceries? When is he going to mention? Okay, there it is. Yes. Okay, we're good, good again. Good to go. <laughs> That's how the game go, man. Indeed. It's a fun game, though. Love it. Told you I ain't going back. A, I ain't fucking leaving. It's fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Oh, boy. Indeed. All right. Did we miss it? Hold on. Let me see. I feel like I feel like I missed something that I wanted to touch on. Um, I didn't want to broach the idea because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, changes going on in my life. So I do have to take a break next week. Okay. So we'll break next week. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then. Um, yeah, I'm getting a puppy next after. week. So that's good. That's good. Oh, the puppy needs to make an appearance on the pod. Young Mamba, she's gonna she's gonna slide. She's gonna slide. You know she's gonna. Oh, what's slide. her name? Mamba. Mamba, that's a great pet name. Come on, man. Come on. Great pet name. Thank you. Uh, and name. she's all black, of course. Black Mamba. Duh. 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 <laughs> what kind of dog? What's the, what's the breed? She is a Cavapoo. So a mixed, Cavapoo. Yeah, the little babes. Can't I've wait. seen Cavapoos. They're expensive. Y'all getting money? No, no, no. We got her on the dizzy, 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 dizzy. <laughs> on the dizzy. You got a discount Cavapoo? Uh, yeah, she, um, no one wanted her <laughs> in the, oh. uh, I'm, I'm going to get the puppy voice. Yo, I can't be that nigga, bro. Oh, Yo, you're going to get so soft. I'm already softer. soft. Today, I know, you're going to get softer. We opened up a box today of a puppy starter kit, and it was like Christmas mm-hmm. morning. We're like, what does this do? What does this do? Oh my God, it has a light. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm cooked. You got to get a house train though. Brother, house training brother. is imperative. I'm off for two weeks just to start it up. Feel me? Got to. Got, got to. to. Absolutely. Dog dad. Like it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. This is your, this is guys, this is your guys' first child. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Good times. Have fun with that. Get it trained. <laughs> um, that's all I got. That's all I got in the tank for today. Right. Indeed. Peace out, guys. Make sure you hit the socials and the YouTubes and all of that stuff. Share the stuff you like and let us know about the stuff you don't like so we can roast your comments on here. <laughs> We're waiting. That too. Indeed. All right, guys. Peace out. Peace.